I'd be playing cards. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect that follows for the day. Okay. Almighty, Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness, and mercifully give us those things for which you are our brother Christians and their God, and for our
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told them all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land of Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, in the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable to you, my Lord and my Savior. Amen. 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 How great it is to be with you at St. David's Church today. It's been a very long time since I've been here as a preacher or involved with your parish. The beauty of retiring means now I've allowed some flexibility in where I spend my Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. In the past days, I had the privilege of working, though, with uh, Reverend Catherine Lewis and Deacon Guy Drake in various meetings and other places, so our paths have crossed. I also worked with the leadership of St. David's Parish so many years ago, it has to be 20 or 30 years ago, when we were trying to convince the bishop that we were to start a new Episcopal church school somewhere. And we even had the location we wanted to get, and that would have been at Gethsemane in inner city Minneapolis. But guess what? We were told our dream was not to happen. Our dream was to continue where we are and to allow the one or two Episcopal churches to do well in here and in Fairville. But we had a dream. Many of us have dreams that do not come to reality. Dreams are there to move us on, though, to other ideas where we do see a need for something in our future. Dreams for a church community are really important, and we need to keep our dreams alive. One of the people that we heard from this morning was the prophet Jeremiah. He kept his dreams alive for a long, long time. Jeremiah was, from, was a prophet from the priestly order of the 12 tribes who turned to God in prayer on a daily basis for inspiration and wisdom. Believe it or not, the book of Jeremiah is extremely long, 52 chapters, and the reading for today is only from chapter 23. But we heard one of the, the dreams and the messages from Jeremiah. And I'll repeat that message because it is so very important. And here are his words. The day will surely come when I will raise David as a righteous branch, and David shall reign as a king and will execute justice and righteousness in the land. It's also clear in this reading that Jeremiah is predicting that the Jewish people will come and maybe solve some of their differences, being from the 12 tribes, and that the two main branches, Judah and Israel, will come together, and that will give them the power and the strength to unite their people, and it will be under David's leadership. Was David a perfect man? No, of course not. None of us are perfect people. But he certainly was 
a dreamer and he had his idea. But what was between him and his dream? Well, there are the nations of Assyria and Babylon and Egypt. Jeremiah did not forsake his dream though. He continued to preach and call for that righteous brand to be established. The use of our scripture message, especially the messages today, is that they that it feature the Jewish people as the sheep, and then we, our shepherd, is of course Jesus. Those images speak very highly of something the people would have been comfortable with, because they had probably agricultural land and sheep very close to them. We in our day and age don't have that opportunity to really touch the sheep very often. And I was privileged, though, to have one neighbor in my local Acorn Ridge neighborhood in Minnetonka, where he'd been raised on a farm and had a real gift, and that was shearing sheep. So believe it or not, they brought the sheep into my neighborhood, less than two houses from where I live, and have lived for 65 years. They have the sheep shear. And that was an adventure for all of the children of the neighborhood. It was an important thing. But as we move on to some of the other readings for today, we know that it is time to also look at other important images in our scripture. We read that the circumcised and the uncircumcised would come together and they also unite together. In other words, the Gentiles and the Jewish people would be united and they would have a cornerstone of their faith in the man, Jesus. We are inspired to this day by that leadership. We can thank the wisdom of Jeremiah and Paul, the reading from the Asita Ephesians, for the foundation of the church that we now belong to. In contrast to Jeremiah, which is 50-some uh, chapters long, Mark is only 16 chapters. It's the shortest gospel, the one that was written first, and it sort of ends with not the most positive ending that some of the other ones do. Sixteen chapters. So when I was teaching the Sunday school program at a direct school, which was for 15 or 20 years or more, uh, I used an image that I would put on the blackboard, and I would say, as we start the book of Mark, I'm going to draw a mountain. And I would draw that on the chalkboard at that time, probably, and say chapter one through eight of the book of Mark is the jury journey of Jesus up a mountain, and the chapters nine through sixteen are the journey down, which, as we know, leads to his death in Jerusalem. But the one thing that they all, all the people that heard these stories knew, were the ten commandments. And I brought a page on a book that was published about the Bible 25 or 30 years ago. And there was an Episcopal priest whose brother was into art and putting the story in a very simple form. And this was the page on the importance of the Ten Commandments. And this is so cute with all the hands for the tums of for the tummy, because listen to how he starts it. For fast, fast, fast repeat, take two tablets. <laughs> and those two tablets are the tablets that are the Ten Commandments. And so what I have also brought with today is what I have had in my office for a long time, my church office as well as my home office. And this is the replica of the Ark of the Covenant where the Ten Commandments were stored. The Ten Commandments were placed inside, and then at rituals and celebration time, they would take them up and read of those Ten Commandments. And we know that in not all religious traditions, the numbering of the Ten Commandments may not be identical. When I was raised in a town that was 99% Roman Catholic, just south of here in Ukraine, with the beautiful thing. Uh, Wenceslaus Cathedral, I was taught that there were three commandments that dealt with God. 
you were to very definitely how God was our creator and that we were to worship him. And the ones after her are the, the rest of the commandments, honor thy neighbor as thyself. But what happened is that in time, some of the churches took a look at those commandments and said, we're going to kind of subdivide the three that are related to God and make four out of it. So here are the four. You will have no other gods before me, and idol worship was a big deal in that time and place. You shall not make any graven images. You will not have an image of a fertility god to, to be in your home. Three, you will not take the name of the Lord in vain. And four, and which was the third commandment for me, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. All those are from Exodus 20. But how did we get from having three to seven? Well, when all the ones that deal with your neighbor, honor your mother, father, you should not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness. They took the tenth one and they divided into two. You will not covet your neighbor's wife. And the final one, and you will not covet your neighbor's good. Sometimes it's hard not to covet your neighbor's good what they have compared to what we may have not had in our lives. But we also have to remember that our people in status places well below us that need our help on a completely different scale. I noticed the, the housing uh, sign out there on this, the uh, beginning of your church. As all of you know, the Habitat for Humanity program is so important and so necessary. And so are so many of the feeding programs that are out there today. Many of you are involved with those personally yourself. And I celebrate your activity in the greater world, not just within the walls. Your food station right next door is a symbol of that. And I was so proud of St. David's when they put it on their property. So what, what do we do with those 12 commandments today? Well, we look for ways we can enact them out. And so I turn to a reading to talk about this, the lessons for today. And here is how they ended the instructions on what we should be doing. It said, let the spirit blow through your life freely. Don't quench the spirit's ideas that might inspire you. Say, hallelujah, praise God in his holy temple. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him for the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with symbols. Praise him with a lot of symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we try to do that in our daily lives. And I get inspiration from so many people to do a better job that I'm doing day by day. And one of the people that I mentioned at the 8 o'clock service was uh, Steve Charlton. Steve Charlton, for some of you, is an inspirational writer. When I was at Drex School, I had the opportunity to go to Alaska to meet with Bishop Steve Charlton. And I was so inspired by all the things he was doing. He did not stay in Alaska forever due to the fact that his family had needs too. His family he had a featured person that was very, very depressed without sunlight. So he moved to the south, but his, his wisdom continued. And here is a reading from, recent reading from Steve Charlton. Give your hearts to God. Give your money to the poor. Give your loyalty to your friends and your wisdom to the youth. Give your compassion to all living things. Your hard work for your vocational work. Your care of the earth, Mother Earth. Your passion to your art, whatever it might be. Your patience for people who need it. Your forgiveness for those who have wronged you. Your truth to your community. 
your witness to justice, and your blessings wherever you can. I recently started a program at Trinity Church in Excelsior called Braver Angels. And in the Braver Angels meetings, we look at ways of how we can put two people from different, complete, different political or social uh, standards and get them in conversation to tell us about their lives and why they come to serving in inclusion and to work on anything that will bring understanding and peace between two things that could be fighting and bring them together in community. It's a, it's a dream of course. We heard of the dreams that were in people's lives, the dream of David for a better life. We cannot give up on our dreams today. And so I'm going to end with a prayer about creation in general. And here is a prayer from my little book that I celebrate, the little treasure book of prayers. Oh God, your world is so beautiful. Oh giver of life, I would love to watch the sunlight paint and repaint the landscape from moment to moment each day. I love to listen to the sympathy, symphony of sound that rises naturally from your world and from its creature. I love to feel the touch of the wind and the cycles of warmth and coolness to taste the richness and the variety of the foods that you have provided on Mother Earth. To sense the nearness of others, not the separation of others, but the nearness of others. And to be especially aware, day by day, your presence in my life. So thank you, God, for making it possible for us and for all people on the world to experience things that will allow us to rejoice in your creation. Um, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten now made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and was conceived of the Holy Spirit, from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was a man. For our sake, he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We have now knowledge by baptism, forgiveness, and sins. We look at the river of resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In thanks for the earth and planets and the universe in which they lie, and for life, breath, and hope. We pray to you, Creator God. For the ones we keep in our hearts and the ones we don't know, our communities and the outsiders, the loved and the hated, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop elect, and Craig, our bishop, <coughs> and all clergy and lay, lay readers, for all the faithful of any religion, and for those who do not follow, follow any. We pray. Glory, Glory and praise to you, Lord and God. <clears throat> For those who suffer from, suffer from abuse, discrimination, dictatorship, war, violence, 
brutality and injustice, we pray. Glory be to you, O living God. For those who suffer from mental illness and great despair, for prisoners, for those without the safety of home, for the sick and dying, especially for Bobby, Danielle, Joanne, Johan, Jeff, Linda, Andy, Martha, Sharon, Jerry, Ginevra, Leo, Catherine, Tom, Ruth, Nick, David, Julian, John, and Jean, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. <clears throat> For the many blessings we see, and the blessings we are shielded from seeing, we give thanks, especially for the engagement of Brianna Gurley and Dennis Fahlbrand, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. <clears throat> For the person next to me, and the person who will me, for every crop in the field, and the grace of God, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For those who have died, and those who mourn, especially Carol Bendell, Brenda Johnson, Margaret Prescott, Diane Ivey, and Frank Kemper, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, and in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercies, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied the goodness of each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive and restore and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in us in eternal life. Amen. Before the peace, one last prayer for understanding. God, give us a wider vision to see and to understand. And when our lives are overcast with trouble and with care, give us the faith to go beyond the dark clouds of despair and recognize the hidden smile behind every tear. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. gifts from our treasures that are given to us by a gracious God. Amen. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you. We bless you, holy and gracious God, source of all abundance. From before time, you made us ready for the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. The sun, the moon, and the stars, the earth, the winds, and the waters, and every living thing. You made us in your own image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and we wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us to call us time and time again. You called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with the angels and the saints in the choir of praises that ring throughout eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loves us. He broke bread with the outcasts and sinners. He healed the sick and proclaimed the good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, and yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. And then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life, and to be glorified with you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends, and he took bread, and he gave thanks to you, broke it, and then gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and he gave, gave thanks to you again, and gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you, and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Now gather at his table, O God of creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves in living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and the blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole of earth and make us a new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with David and all your saints from every tribe and every language and every people and every nation to feast of the banquet prepared from the foundations of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we all honor and all glory and praise 
forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. voices with the prayer. O oh God, give us the courage to face our ideals and to come to this table with a pure heart. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Having a prayer station in the All Saints Chapel during communion.
for the air we breathe, for the water we drink that quenches our thirst. May we feel your presence in our everyday lives and bring thanks to you. We see your presence in the living things greater than we are. We touch lives. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power and the blessing of our Creator God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. Good morning, uh, Diane Curley here, senior warden this year. First of all, welcome to everyone for coming to St. David's today. If it's your first time or visiting or a relative, we're so glad you're here and hope you come back again. And as always, we will have uh, downstairs a forum today, a social time uh, with treats and coffee and conversation. And first, thank you to Elaine Barber. Thank you. I wonder if anybody was a student here of yours. <laughs> um, at Breck. Um, the other thing is also to Richard. Thank you for um, playing with me. <laughs> now, next week, um, everyone will be back. Uh, we believe Roger will be back, Catherine will be back, um, and we'll also be celebrating the 50th and 40th um, anniversaries of our nations. And I, what I want to do is read to you a little blurb about what's happening um, this week. And I, I hate to read announcements, but I want to get everything in, so here goes. So all Minnesotan Episcopalians are invited to join in the day of celebrating the 50th anniversary of the ordination of women in the Episcopal Church. Led by a cohort of women clergy from around the diocese, this joyful day will include story sharing, a screening again of the Philadelphia 11, and a panel discussion afterwards, there will be a potluck dinner on the lawn of St. Mark's Cathedral, and then they're going to premiere a brand new Minnesota-specific documentary, which no one has seen yet, uh, about the, how the ordination of women to the priesthood has shaped the, our diocese in the last 50 years, and for the next 50. And then they're going to conclude with a Eucharist, and they're going to have history displays around there. It's going to be quite the festive event. So that's all this Friday. It starts at 3 o'clock. If you can't come at three, come when you can. The uh, potluck dinner is at seven, or excuse me, five, and then they're going to premiere the new documentary at 6.30, and then at seven is the Eucharist down there. And believe it or not, um, Marianne Buddy, uh, a Minnesotan of many years, who is now at the National Cathedral, is going to be leading the Eucharist. So Marianne Buddy will be down there um, on Friday night. And then Sunday, we're going to celebrate in our own way um, the women's ordination. And also, it is Lindsay Freeman's 40th anniversary. So Len is all getting, getting the cake ready. I, I won't tell you if he's making it or not, but you have to come and see. <laughs> so it'll be a celebration for both of those great events. Um, and last but not least, today's the parade. And it looks like Mother Nature's not cooperating right now. But we're hoping uh, it's getting out of their system. And by 1 o'clock, it will be sunny. and temperate and really nice. And the other thing about the parade today, you don't have to have signed up. This is for the Raspberry Festival parade. Um, it's our chance to get out in the neighborhood, um, to bring a little luck to the world and have some fun. Um, we have all sorts of stuff to do. We hand out um, treats for people in the out here is pouring out. Treats <laughs> the, fair, the parade goers. But know that you do not have to have signed up. And you can come closer to the one o'clock time because there will be a few more work of us getting in queue for our great stuff. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> good morning, uh, Bonnie Boyd. I just want to let you know that the Good Courage Farm had another delivery this morning, so God's rain's been good to us. Maybe not the hail, but the rain. Um, this is the last of the berry delivery, and we'll be moving to larger fruit. <laughs> I think it's pears next time, so please pick up your package if you're part of the subscription. Please stand for our blessing. <laughs> oh God, we are in your hands and your feet in this world, the foundation storm from which mission can happen. Keep our eyes heavenward, our minds focused on the tasks you have for us before us. Refresh us if we are tired. Renew us when we falter. Awake us daily to hear the sound of the voices of your people. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.